the fun I have in meditating on the Word of God. And I, I know we've heard people talk about that, but I want to encourage you to do that. As you know, or maybe don't know, because I've been doing a radio program for 20-something years, I walk through books of the Bible. And what I do in that radio program is I just take a five-minute challenge, and I'll just take a few verses, pull something out, and give a challenge for the day of the, on that radio program from came from that passage. But one of the things that's been fun for me over the years is to just read the Word of God and to have God bring some things that are right there off the page. But a lot of them come from questions. As I'm reading something, I'll run across something and I'll, I'll have a question that I have to stop and say, this doesn't make sense. Why, why does it say that when this seems to be a different way? And I don't just ignore it. And when God begins to speak to me that way, I stop mm. and I start to wrestle with it and I allow the Spirit of God to bring other passages to mind. And then from there, He begins to unlock a whole lot of things. And I'm actually going to be sharing with you today something that just recently, within the last few weeks, as I was writing radio programs, I ran across something in the book of Exodus. That's where we are in our radio program. I ran across something that was stated by God but it didn't appear to be right, mm. and so I stopped. And I said, Lord, I, I know you don't lie, but you said something here, but it doesn't appear to be true. Why, what am I missing? And so I want to take you there, and I hope you'll be paying attention today, and I hope you'll be listening through the Spirit of God, because I think there's something He has for all of us today that's going to come from this. So go in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. Look at verses 6 through 12. The nation of Israel has come out of Egypt. They've crossed the Red Sea. And in chapter 16, verses 6 through 12, they're grumbling against God because they didn't have any meat. And they're hungry. Listen to verses 6 through 12 of Exodus 16. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Isn't that interesting? Mm. And in, in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because He has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against Him, what are we? You're not grumbling. Your grumbling's not against us, but it's against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before me, sorry, come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. As soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Let's pray together. Father, as we dive into this section of Scripture and the, the verses that you're going to be opening our hearts to today, may this deep truth that I had to wrestle with, that you've opened up in my eyes, may it come across from you, though, and not from me. Mm -hmm. Lord, may the truth that's reached my heart that you're still working with me on, may that truth begin to penetrate our hearts as well in the way in which you desire. But Lord, if we're going to understand this, we need your help. We need to humble ourselves like children and say, we don't understand. Show us. But Lord, when we come to you in faith, asking, believing that you will speak, you do. And so, Lord, that's why we're here today. Show us what you have for us. Speak to our hearts that we may not only hear, but that we may listen yeah. and obey. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I know what's going to happen next. After he provides the bread and the meat, and their bellies are full, they're going to complain against God. Hmm. But God twice says, you will know that I'm the Lord. And that sounds to me like when we say, you'll know that I'm the Lord, it sounds to me like they would worship Him and trust Him from then on. Hmm. I mean, then you'll know that I'm the Lord. And then we'd say, yeah, we know He's the Lord and we worship Him. We'll go to chapter 17, look at verses 1 through 7. They've just been grumbling against the Lord, not against Moses and Aaron, as Moses pointed out. And he's already provided the meat and the, the bread, just like he said he would. 
Chapter 17, verse 1, All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? Mm. But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us? and our children and our livestock with thirst. Stop for a second. Didn't we already just read in chapter 16 that God said, then you'll know that I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He said, you'll know that I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. Yet they're saying, Moses, why'd you bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children. Verse 4, so Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go, behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So we've got we to gotta deal with this question. What does it mean then when God says to them, you'll know then from that time, you'll know that I'm the one that brought you to Egypt. You'll know that I'm the one, I am the Lord when I feed you with the manna and, and the quail. Yet they obviously don't know. But God said, you will know. Well, I'm not going to answer that question just yet. Let's go back a few chapters to chapter 14. And let's look at a similar situation with the people of Egypt. In chapter 14... Verses 10 through 18, God's about to uh, bring the nation of Israel across the Red Sea and defeat, the, and defeat the Egyptians at the same time. Exodus 14, starting in verse 10. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What, you, what have you done in, to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I'll harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go on in after them. And I'll get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. God says, when I do this, Egypt will know. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Those of you who know a little bit about history, from that day forward, did the Egyptians worship the Lord? No. no. But the Bible says that they'll know that He's the Lord. So as I was wrestling with this, and I'm saying, Lord, I know Your Word is true, and if You say they'll know, then they know. But they don't know. And then He took me to Romans chapter 1. Go with me to Romans chapter 1. We'll start in verse 16. Paul says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world mm -hmm. in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, 
and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, and because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. God opened my eyes to see, and I hope you see it as well, God has revealed Himself to everyone through creation. His divine nature, His eternal qualities have been clearly seen through what's been made, so that all men are without excuse. And although they knew God, they would not acknowledge Him as God or worship Him as God. They worship the creature instead of the Creator. Listen closely, folks. When God said, when I drown the Egyptians in the Red Sea, then they'll know, He wasn't saying they're going to worship Him. What He's saying is, they'll be accountable yes, from sir. that day yes, forward. Sir. Amen. When He told the Israelites, when I bring the quail and I bring the manna, then you will know that I'm the Lord. Mm. He knew they weren't going to worship Him as Lord. They're going to question. They're going to grumble. They're going to doubt. But He says, you're accountable from that day forward. Go to Romans chapter 3 real quick while we're here in Romans chapter 1. I'm not going to take the time to walk you through all this, but in Romans chapter 3, look at verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that how many mouths? Every, Every mouth may be stopped. And what? The whole world may be held accountable to God. Don't Thank miss that. You. Thank you, Lord. There's no such person that doesn't know. There's no such person that's not accountable to the truth of who God is. Mm. So there are people that say they're atheists, mm. but they're liars. Yes. <laughs> they know there's a God. They may not want to acknowledge it. They might even have duped themselves into thinking that He's not there. But the Bible says, God Himself says, they know. Mm. They do know. Deep down, they know. They might say they're agnostic. It doesn't matter. You know there's a God. And the Bible says that the whole world is accountable to God. But don't, don't, don't sit here listening about those who don't know the Lord versus you who do know the Lord. Because he's going to talk to us in a little bit. But I want to lay this foundation. I'm going to ask you this question. Did they know that He was the Lord? The answer is yes. Let's go back to Exodus 14. Did the Egyptians really know that it was the Lord at that time? Well, the Bible actually tells us in their own words show that they did. Exodus 14, look at verses 21 through 25. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and the cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. Listen. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. The Egyptians said, God's fighting against us, not Israel. Rough down the river. They knew. Did they worship Him? Mm -hmm. No. But did they know? Yes, they knew. They're accountable in many ways, but especially in that one. Mm -hmm. What about the Israelites? Oh, they knew too. Go to chapter 14, verses 30 and 31. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so that the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in His servant Moses. Mm. They saw, and they believed. It just didn't last long. Mm. It didn't last long. Go to John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, look at verse 37. Though He, Jesus, had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in Him, so that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be, filled, be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what He has heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Mm. Then it goes on and says, Because they saw, and they had enough revelation to believe, but they chose not to, He made it so they could not believe. That's another whole discussion for another time. But let me just say this to you. 
God is the one who determines how much light you get, how much revelation you get. Mama. And God determines when that time's over. Mm -hmm. wow. But you will have enough that you'll be accountable for. Mm -hmm. To whom much revelation is given, much more will be, they'll be held in higher accountability. That's why you shouldn't all seek to be preachers and teachers. Ooh. Ooh. By the way, you say, well, I have no desire to be a preacher and teacher. No, when we spout off even out on the streets on how things ought to be, mm. I'm, I'm going to lay a challenge to some of you guys. And I want you to hear my heart. I really do love you, and I want you to hear me. But Christians are being too well known for complaining and griping about what's going on in the mm -hmm. government when the Bible says our job is to pray. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. You deal with this between you and God. Mm -hmm. God's been convicting me about this just recently this past week. I was doing a study in Daniel 9 where Daniel was praying, confessing his sins mm. and the sins mm. of his people Israel. Mm. He was in captivity mm. because of their disobedience and the nation's disobedience, and he was suffering because of it. But he wasn't griping about how bad everybody else was. He was praying and saying, God, I'm in this nation too, and I'm just as guilty mm. as they are. Mm. So I'm going to challenge you guys. Are you known for complaining about what's going on in the government? Wow. Complaining about our leadership? Or are you known for praying Thank you, and bringing it before God? Thank you, Lord. You're accountable. You know what His Word says. Mm. Do you do it? Mm. Do you know that the Bible actually says that there's going to be a day of reckoning for us as Christians as well? Yes, there's a day of reckoning for those who reject God and don't receive His salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm. Yes, every little thing they've ever done or even thought has been written in a book and they're going to be judged according to what was written in the books and according to Revelation 20, 11 and following. They're going to be judged whether or not their name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. Why? Because God did reveal to them their need of the Savior and they rejected yes. God's only provision for their sin and they've added that heap mm. of a sin on top of all their other sins and they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Mm. Yes, there's a day of judgment for the lost, but do Christians understand there's a day of reckoning Thank you. for Christians? <clears throat> yes. We won't be reckoned whether or not we get into heaven. That's already been given to us, and it's a, a promise, and it's a sealed gift. We have His Spirit. We have eternal life. We're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says we're all going to experience the judgment seat of Christ, <laughs> where He will judge us according to what we've done after salvation mm -hmm. with all that He's given and mm -hmm. expected of us to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. If you looked at the parables of the talents, one gave one five, another two, another one. That way you won't compare yourself with anybody else mm -hmm. who will not they're working mm -hmm. as hard as you. Some people aren't expected to do as much as others. But you will be held accountable for what He gave you to do. Yes. Are you ready for that day? You can't say, I didn't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you not only know, you have the Holy Spirit in you now as a Christian. And what's the Holy Spirit's job? Convict you. To reveal, to convict, to share the truth of God, to bring the Scriptures to light. I'm going to be preaching up in, by the way, be praying for me if you won't mind. I'm going to be actually preaching in a part of Virginia and northern uh, North Carolina, western North Carolina, this week where a lot of that devastation has happened. My wife and I hit the road tomorrow morning, and Lord willing, we'll get there safely, and I'll be preaching. I'm going to be doing a whole series on the Holy Spirit. Mm. And what the baptism of the Spirit is and how the Holy Spirit is a person and not a power. How the, what the filling of the Holy Spirit is and how that's different. What's how the Holy Spirit is, it has a role in, in choosing our gifts and how we're to work in the church. But I'm actually going to bring this message as the introductory message this Sunday. First time I've ever preached it is today. I'll be preaching it Sunday along the lines of we're going to be dealing with the Holy Spirit before you start dealing with the study of the Holy Spirit. Understand you're going to be held accountable for everything you hear this mm. week. What about you? The Bible says that if you live by the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, if you've been born again because of the Spirit, if you're alive by the Spirit, you're to keep in step with the Spirit, do you? Do you know that the Bible says that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives within us? Yes. We know that truth. You know that verse. Do you... Walk in it. My Lord. You see, folks, we're really, really good at talking a good game. But one day we will be held accountable. And the Holy Spirit's helping us now, by the way, before the test day comes. Amen. Have you ever had one of those teachers that when you were taking a test would walk up and down the aisles of the classroom and they'd look at your test and they whisper to you, you might want to look at 13 another time. And you said, thank you. 
because they saw you're going to get it wrong and you need to look at it again. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing now. He's saying to us in love, look, there's a test coming and you're not ready for, for number 13. My Lord today. And he in love convicts us. Why? He does it because he wants to reward us. So what we're going to do is we're going to close in the time we have by looking at a very interesting story in John chapter 9. I want you to understand, knowing the truth and responding appropriately to the truth are two different things. Not only does the world know that there's a God and that they're accountable, those of us who are Christians know a lot more truth, and we're accountable for those things as well. In John chapter 9, I'm going to read to you verses 1 through 41. Look closely at this. As he, Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it's not this man that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. The Jews had been taught by the Pharisees that if you were sick, it's because you were a sinner. Well, this guy was born blind, so their question was, okay, according to the <coughs> theology, according to what you're teaching us in the doctrine, this guy either sinned in the womb, or his parents sinned for him to be born blind. Jesus said that has nothing to do with his sin or his parents' sin. Amen. God did this so that his glory may be displayed at this thank time. You, thank you. We must work the works of him who sent me while it's day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm, in, I'm the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with saliva. And then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. And so he went and washed and came back seeing. Now the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he's like him. He kept saying, No, I'm the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes open? He said, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where, where is he? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> he, I went and did what he told me to do. I came back and I don't know where he is now. So they brought him to the Pharisees and the man who had been formerly been blind and they brought him to the Pharisees and it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight and he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Now some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? Mm. And there was a division among them, so they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, He's a prophet. Mm. The Jews didn't believe that he had been blind, <laughs> and had received his sight, until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they asked them, is this your son who was born, you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age, he'll speak for himself. Now his parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be the Messiah, the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he's of age, ask him. Mm -hmm. Don't miss this, folks. Yeah. God is opening eyes here. Not just the blind man being physically blind and now physically able to see. He's revealing truth to a lot of people Thank in this. You. Thank you. He's revealing it to this friends of the guy. He's revealing it, his truth, to the Pharisees. He's revealing it to the parents. Do the parents know that Jesus did this? Yes. Mm. But, they but they're not willing to acknowledge it. Did they know? Oh, they knew. But they didn't respond appropriately. Mm -mm -mm. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man's a sinner. He answered, Whether he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know is, Though I was blind, Boom. now I see. Yes, sir. He said, they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? <laughs> he answered them, I've told you already, and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You're his disciple, but we're disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. Mm -hmm. The man answered, Why, wow, that's an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, according to your, your teaching. God doesn't listen to sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. Mm. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered, you were born in utter sin and you would teach us. And they cast him out. 
By the way, do you realize how much spiritual insight this blind man's all of a sudden starting to have? Mm. Is he saved yet? No, mm -mm. but God's opening more and more of his eyes to the spiritual eyes to the truth. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking wow. to you. Mm -mm -mm. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Mm -mm. By the way, what did this man do when he worshipped Jesus right there? He declared Jesus to be God. Because mm -hmm. a Jew knew full well, you don't bow down or worship anyone but God. Mm -hmm. And when he worshiped Jesus, he said, you're God. Now here's the tricky part. Stick with me here. Jesus said, for judgment, I came into this world that those who do not see may see. And those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Wow. Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. Don't miss what Jesus says here in verse 39. For judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Remember John 12 where we looked earlier? Although they saw the miracles that he had done, they would not believe. Therefore, he made it so they could not believe. Mm -hmm. They saw, and he made them blind because they didn't respond to what he revealed. Mm -hmm. We're all born blind. We're all born blind spiritually. We're spiritually dead. There's no one righteous, not even one. And Romans 3.11 says no one even seeks God. Mm -hmm. We don't even go looking for him without his help. No, sir. But once he begins to draw us by his spirit, and puts many different ways that he uses at his power and at his means to open our eyes to the truth. We now become accountable for that revelation. And actually some of us, especially those of us here in America, have been given more mm. and more and more light than others. I'm so tired of Christians who sit around saying, well, what about those who have never heard? And we talk about unreached people groups. Mm. There may be people groups that we haven't sent missionaries to yet. But let me say this to you. There's no such thing as those who have never heard. Yes, sir. In Romans chapter 10, well, how can they hear unless someone preaches to them? You're reading it backwards. All of Romans, he's just been already laid out in Romans 3, verse 19, that the whole world is accountable to God. Mm. He's already said in Romans chapter 2, verse 16, that everyone will be held accountable through Jesus Christ, as his gospel declares. Mm. All men's sins are going to be dealt with through Jesus. Mm. How can he ha deal with a whole world and hold everybody accountable through Jesus unless they heard? And that's what Romans 10 is saying. If you go back and read Romans 10, when Paul says, how can they hear unless someone preaches to them? And how can they hear unless they're sent? What he's not saying is, if we don't tell them, they may never hear. What he was saying is, God would never expect anyone to believe something they hadn't heard. And he wouldn't expect someone to hear something without sending someone or somehow them to hear. Amen. And then he says in verse 18 of Romans 10, Did they not hear? Of course they did. His word has gone out into all the earth. Colossians chapter 1 verse 23, Paul says, This gospel which has been preached in all creation. Please hear me. I still think we should be sending missionaries out. Why? Because people are being born every day all over the globe that need to hear about Jesus. Mm. Even here in Melbourne. Mm. But understand this. Stop sitting around thinking there are those who have heard and those who haven't. No, there are those who have heard more than others, mm -hmm. and they'll be held accountable in that measure. Yes. But we can sit and talk about those who have heard and those who haven't heard. I'm going to close with you. Mm. What is God speaking to you right now wow. that you'll be held accountable for? Mm. You see, we can easily say, well, those lost people, those Egyptians, man, how could they reject that? They... They didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside of them like you do. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God Himself indwelling them and bringing the Scriptures to life. They don't have the promise that if they would read this book, He would show it to them if He dwelt with them because they don't have Him in it. Oh, the promise is theirs if they'll receive Him by faith. Mm. But you already have Him. Yes. Do you read it? Mm. Do you actually read the book? Do you meditate on it? Do you actually spend time in prayer? Mm -hmm. Or are you satisfied 
with just going to heaven. Wow. Jesus said, I didn't save you so that you'd go to heaven. I saved you so that I would conform you into the image of my son. God the Father said that. We'd be conformed in the image of Jesus Christ. So guys, I say this to you in love and I speak into myself as well. Thank God I won't be accountable for whether or not he's the Messiah. Amen. I'm saved. Amen. By grace through his, his gift of salvation, through faith. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believed. Why? Because it's been revealed. Now though, for those of us who have had it revealed, we're held in higher accountability now. What has he told you that you're not doing? What has he said that you're not listening to? My Lord. And let him take it there. Father, I thank you for this chance to come and to be used in you to, to open our eyes some more to these truths. But Lord, I know that the whole time I preach, I'm speaking to myself as well. Lord, I thank you for the fact that as I was reading in Exodus and came across these passages that said, then they will know, and it sure didn't look like they knew, you challenged me to just not move on until you gave me insight. Lord, your word has promised us in James chapter 1, verse 5, that if we lack wisdom, we're to ask you, and you'll show us. We're to believe that you will. Lord, forgive us for all these years of thinking, well, Jim's been to seminary, and Jim's a preacher, and Lord, <laughs> all of these truths are available to everyone. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. You, said, you prayed, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 11. You said, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned. And you revealed them to little children, for such was your gracious will. Lord, everyone in here, doesn't matter our level of intellect, if we're willing to humble ourselves, we can understand spiritual yes, truth. Oh, Father, we've gotten caught up over the years into the latest guy who's written a book on the secret Bible code mm. and how this number points to this, and then if you flip this backwards and upside down, then you'll understand truth. Lord, your word has already said that's not how you reveal truth. No. You don't reveal truth to the people who have the highest intellect. You reveal truth to everyone willing to humble themselves and say, I want to know. But Lord, as you said to us today, when we say, I want to know, and then you speak, we're now accountable. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, I pray that we'll go from here today changed by, by your grace <clears throat> because we walked in obedience to what you said. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys.